All right. Now we're browning our taco meat, and this is where we're going to put in our three. We've got three pounds in here, so we're going to do three packets of taco seasoning. Let's go ahead and get out our colander, and we'll get our grease drained. Now I always put uh, a bucket or a big bowl underneath mine. You can see over here. Hopefully you can see, I'm not sure, but I always put it over a bigger bowl so that way you don't want to you know, flush the grease down your drain because that does clog your drains over time. It's not going to be an instant thing nine times out of ten. So, but what you want to do is uh, make sure you do it into a, a bowl. Alright, so and what I always do is I always wipe out the grease, the leftover hamburger grease that's in there. Now we'll go ahead and get this finished strained and we'll get on over and put in the taco seasoning. Alright, let's turn that off for just a second. So what I do is I open up the packets, dump it right in the middle. Like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, three, roughly about that full of water out of my packets. I just use that, and that's the measuring that I've used for many, many years uh, when making tacos or enchiladas or anything else like that. So we're going to want to go in with three of those. And then I move it back onto the heat because that way it won't burn the seasoning. And go ahead, open up the other two seasonings, put them in there. All the way open there. All right. So we got those in there. And then what I like to do is I like to actually get that all stirred and integrated together before I put my hamburger back in there. So I've got ah, taco seasoning soup <laughs> next on the menu. <laughs> all right. So once that's all mixed together, then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and add our drained browned hamburger. Okay, now what we're going to do here guys is go ahead and cook this over medium heat all right, until most of the moisture is gone. You're not going to nine times out of ten be able to get all of the moisture out of your hamburger without completely drying out your meat. So what you want to do is I always just try to chop up the, the bigger pieces just because I like a nice small uh, hamburger when I'm biting in. I don't like to get those big chunks where I don't feel that they're seasoned all the way through. So we're going to go ahead and get this on, uh, like I said, medium heat. And we're going to simmer this until most of the moisture is gone. All right, guys. We've almost got all of the moisture out of our taco meat. Uh, this is actually for the enchiladas. I, I didn't mix up videos, I swear. And while I was outside uh, doing the importing and exporting and uh, cropping up the potato salad video, uh, I walked in. My wife's been in their office this whole time, and I walked in, and uh, I noticed that she had... Uh, uh, she knows me all too well. <laughs> she went ahead and got out a bottle of Fireball and put a shot glass out for me. So I think she's trying to tell me something that I need a drink. And I think she's right. So let's go ahead and crack this sucker open. Oh, it's a fresh one too. Alright guys. Like I said, once again, I like to cook. And I like to drink. So cheers. So, what we're going to do is finish this off, and you can see how most of the moisture is gone, but there's still a little bit of moisture in there. We want most of that gone, so that way, when uh, we put the enchiladas together, there isn't a lot of juices running everywhere and stuff like that. So, what we'll do is go ahead and keep this, once again, on medium heat. I don't want to burn the bottom of the taco meat. Alright guys, let's go ahead and it's ready to go ahead and get our chopped green chilies 
into our taco meat. Now I, this is just a personal preference, I prefer to have my taco meat completely finished before I put the uh, chopped green chilies in here. Uh, it, it, like I said, it's just me, but I think that it absorbs more flavor. It might not. I, I just, this is the way that I've always done it. I, I cook my taco meat. I kind of cook things individual and then mix as far as that goes. So what I'm doing now is cut, opening up, I'm sorry for the noise, opening up the uh, chopped green chilies. And then we'll go ahead and get them into our taco meat. And just a side note, this handy can opener, I'll tell you what, one of the best investments I ever made as far as the can opener to go. It takes four AA batteries. It doesn't plug in. It isn't magnetic. Well, it used to be magnetic, but I kind of bypassed that with a uh, beer tab. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, so it'll literally just run without the magnetization. But that's just the way that I did it. I know it's a safety issue, but I didn't like how I had to have the magnetic sometimes you get deeper cans with higher ridges and that just doesn't work for me <laughs> so what we're looking to do here guys is just simply uh integrate the uh chopped green chilies uh into our pizza i'm sorry pizza lordy our uh, taco meat and then we're just going to kind of warm it up just by it sitting in the taco meat just trying to warm those up just a little bit and then what we'll do is we'll head on over and get started with making our enchiladas. Then we'll get them put in our glass dish and everything like that. So we'll be back. Okay, our taco mixture is basically moisture free. We got a little bit around there, but we're, that's what we're kind of looking for. Is so when we get when you make a swipe through it, moisture just doesn't run all over the place like it's still in there and stuff like that. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and remove this from heat. And then we'll get started making our cheese mixture. All right, guys, what it's time to do now is go ahead and get a mixing bowl, and we are going to make our cheese mixture. Okay, this is what goes inside along with the Monterey Jack cheese, the taco meat, and then everything else that goes in it. So we're going to start off with cottage cheese. We need 24 ounces of cottage cheese, or three cups, whichever way you want to look at it. So we'll get that, all that into the pot, and then we are going to need one cup of sour cream. And this makes a very nice uh, uh, cheese mixture. So that's that one there. So you the trash, great. Okay, let's go ahead and get one cup of the sour cream out here. cheese mixture, the cottage cheese and the sour cream when it goes in there, when it mixes with the Monterey Jack, all just tastes amazing. Alright, so we're shooting for one cup out of here. Alright, one more. I like sour cream in mine. Alright, <laughs> one cup. That should do nicely. All right, now what we're going to do is mix all of that together, and then we'll come back. Our taco meat is done with the green chilies in it. We'll come back and go ahead and start the combination process, and we'll get these suckers in the oven. All right, we'll be back. All right, guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple assembled so you can see it, but it's a little difficult to get the entire shot. As you can see, I had to lower you down a little bit so we get a little distance here. But what I've got is I've got a foil pan for freezing, and I've got a Pyrex pan for glass dish for uh, what we're going to eat tonight. So what I want to do is I want to start off with just a plate, grab, and I do two at a time, two tortillas, and I get the, uh, the burrito shells. Uh, 
that's just I like to have I like to make big ones not just ones that you know are small enough for small people <laughs> big ones for me sorry about the noise and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two in the microwave at 30 seconds uh, then what I'll do is uh, bring them out put it on two plates so that way I have a plate for each one to do individually and then I'm going to set these up here get the enchilada sauce out of my way went ahead and took Monterey Jack out of the uh, bags and just put it into a bowl it makes it a lot easier to uh, put on there so I'm going to this over here and this over here what I'm going to do is go ahead and fill up this dish first tonight and this is a 9 by 13 uh, glass dish get our tortilla shells out and what we'll do is I'll just do each one one at a time I always flip mine over so what we're going to want to do is this is a half cup so I take a half cup of meat and it's just rough a little heaping that's all right half cup of meat kind of shove it in a, a line all right then I'm going to go ahead and go I'm sorry the spoon's still in there I'm going to use that to scrape here in a little bit we'll just leave it in there a third cup of our cottage cheese sour cream mixture and we're just going to dazzle that on top See how it does that. And then we're going to grab, oh, a decent handful because uh, we want to we want it to be real cheesy. Okay, not a handful, I guess, just a pinch. So this is basically what you're looking for uh, in the, uh, actually inside the enchilada. So what we're going to do, and this is a folding technique. Let's do it. I'll do it all at the same time here. Let's do one more. Grab some meat mixture. Okay, we're going to put it down. Kind of lay it out in a row then we'll take a third cup of the cheese and layer that right on top all right and we're going to be using all this so if i get a little bit in there that's fine all right and then just a pinch i would say if i had to estimate about a quarter cup okay and just kind of dazzle that on the top so let me get these out of the way so i can show you how i wrap these together okay and you may already know how to wrap them. I kind of did it this way just so I do. All right. So what I'm going to do is the long end, and I do this a little different. I don't just wrap it over, okay, there's your enchilada, and stuff comes out the side and everything like that. What I do is I tuck, fold the sides over, bring it over the top. Okay. And you got a little out on the outsides. That's fine because what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to scrape the things in their back and then take whatever's out here fold it over and fold it over and then we're just going to do one more wrap on there okay that's the way I do it uh, I think that's a burrito wrap maybe that's what it is I'm not sure I was a little rough with it so I poked a hole through the top so we'll do another one <clears throat> okay and you want, and I put it in the microwave just to get it pliable, so that way you know you don't have rips in your uh, tortilla shell right off the bat. It at least gives it a fighting chance. So give it a scrape back, fold it in, fold it in, and then just once over the top. And if you got a little bit left over, that's fine. That's fine. That's not a problem. That's the way that I wrap my enchiladas. Um, some people may say that's wrong. Well, that's okay. That's the way I do it. So, and the reason why I do it like this here, so I can fit everything inside the pants. So I'll show you one here as we pick it up. Okay, pick it up. Nothing's falling out the sides. That's what I like about it. Nothing's falling out the sides. So then I just go ahead and lay it right in there. Okay, fits inside the glass dish just great. Now this is what we're going to be freezing. So I'm going to go ahead and put that one in here. So I'm going to pick it up. Okay, nothing falling out the sides. That's what I like about it. And if you see, it fits real nice in there. I can usually shove about five into each pan. And like I said, this is for freezing. I, I'm, I'm, we're not going to eat all of this tonight. Well, <laughs> with my daughter, she might, and my son. <laughs> she might. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and try and get at least one pan frozen. I'll probably do two pans uh, or two glass dishes unfroze. So that's basically how I uh, do the wrap. Um, and I'll come back once I've got them all wrapped and I'll show you how to do the enchilada sauce on the top. Alright guys, for this last one, <laughs> I just was curious about how heavy 
these things are. I don't know if you can see. Okay, We've got the scale teared out there. All right. So what we're gonna do? It's our last one. Uh, this batch yielded nine, but I made them, you know, heaping quite big stuff like that. And basically, I didn't want to fill up a whole second uh, glass dish with them. So I'm just making the nine. I could have stretched it out and probably made ten or even eleven out of it, but it usually makes, you know, between eight and twelve, depending on how big you fill it and how big your tortilla shells are. So once again, you know, this is the way I like it. It's not falling out of it. So let's go ahead and bring it on over here and tear it out. And that there is a 14.4 ounce, uh, just about two ounces, ounce and a half short of a pounder, okay, and uh, what I've done is I've got all of my, move this out of the way for a second, I've got all of my uh, enchiladas into the dishes that they're going to be going into. Now, like I said, I usually make 12, they're usually a little bit smaller, but I kind of heap these up just a little bit just because I know that they're going to all eat all of this here and then I want to freeze all this here. So I'll come back and I'll show you how to freeze or how I prepare those for freezing. So what we're going to do now, and this doesn't, this is okay. What you want to do is take this and you want to just shove it up against the outside edge. Alright, and then take the next one if you ain't got space. Just take it and shove it up against the outside. And we're or up against each other because this is all going in the same uh in the same oven so there we go we've got our five all right five of them so now what we're going to want to do is go ahead and get our enchilada sauce all right now i use a lot apparently my can over did not want to open this all the way <laughs> so i like a lot of enchilada sauce on mine um, and I, if you'll notice, I didn't put any enchilada sauce on the inside just because I like it on the outside. So what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of drizzle the enchilada sauce. And I've got two cans, but I'm probably not going to need both because this one is going to go over on this one as well. Like I said, I like a lot of enchilada sauce. You may not like as much, but I like a lot. I like it to be dripping in it. So that way I get all of that good flavor. All right, now what we're going to want to do here is take our pan, and I'm kind of messy right now. Well, I brought up the old fireball. <laughs> Tend to get a little messy after that. So I'm just going to wipe off my dish real quick. Now, we're going to go ahead and take the rest of our cheese, and that cheese is going to be split between our two uh, pans here and once again just get it all over it because this is where the goodness happens <laughs> okay get that one and we'll come over here and we'll get this one right. well, I guess just a little bit more there we go so those are our enchiladas, guys. Uh, what we're going to do now is bake this at 350 degrees for about 20 to 30 minutes, something somewhere around that ballpark, but it's probably going to be more 25 minutes. So let's go ahead and pop this in the oven, and then I'll show you how we go ahead and wrap that, prepare that for the freezer. Uh, preheat, uh, preheat the oven, I should say. Make sure you preheat the oven to 350 degrees before you go and throw it on in there. So... Now, preparing this for the freezer, what I like to do first is I've got this big old roll, <laughs> as you can see, <laughs> I've still got it from when I was <laughs> doing my catering, Papa J's. <laughs> so I like to go ahead and make sure that I'm sealing this up quite a bit. I put the foil on top so that way I didn't have to clean the scale. So what I do first is I go ahead and take plenty, take it clear over the top, okay, and then I wrap it underneath, just like that. 
Then I'll take a, and I found that a serrated knife works best to go ahead and slice that because my cutter must have fallen off a long time ago. So I've got it wrapped once that way. Now what I want to do is turn it around and I do want to wrap it another. And it might be overkill, but I'm alright with it. And then just take it, lap it under. Pull it out. Blend it on there. And lap it under. And I've always found that cling wrap or saran wrap or whatever you want to call it, <laughs> sticks better to itself than it does to any other surface. Alright, except for glass. I guess it does work with glass. So, now we're just going to grab some heavy duty aluminum foil, and we're going to place it right over the top. Tucking in the sides. Okay. And get it nice and sealed. Okay, guys. <laughs> now I remember why it didn't make so many enchiladas is because I did pull out some taco meat before I put the green chilies in there uh, in order to uh, make some tacos for my son. He, he doesn't like the enchiladas. Uh, he doesn't like the, uh, the sour cream and the uh, cottage cheese mixture and the Monterey Jack cheese. He just likes just a plain taco. So, and me being the dad that I am, I kind of try and make everybody happy. Uh, so what I've got going right now is I've got some oil going on medium high heat. I put my tortilla shells uh, in the fridge. Or I'm sorry, in the microwave at uh, 30 seconds like normal. And then what I'm going to do is just spoon on half of a bowl full. Kind of like that there. And then we're going to do the same thing that we did with the, enchilada, or the enchiladas. We're going to fold in the sides. And then we're going to bring it over, scoop it out. So that way what it does, it pushes it out like this here. Fold it in and then we're going to roll it. Okay. Same thing over here. Right there. Once again, fold in the outsides, flip it over the top. Stuff's going to, you know, the tortilla shells are going to be kind of out like this. Take those in and just fold them in like that. And then I just roll it up. Okay, so once again, nothing falls out of the taco. Alright, so as soon as the oil gets heated up, actually, it might be pretty close. It might be pretty close. So, I uh, hope you can see this. Yeah, <laughs> see my fireball. <laughs> so, we'll go ahead and take our taco rolled up like this, and what I do is I put it in here. And I prefer a fried shell, but I don't like a fried shell where when you uh, bite into it, everything falls out the sides and everything else like that. So what I like to do is I like to actually just fry my tacos inside of the shell so that way nothing falls out. I, I don't know, just me. I like to be able to eat on the go. I'm constantly moving. So what we're going to do, bring this over here, and then they've been in there, what, 15 seconds or so? We're going to just give them a light turn. See how brown that got? Oh, very, very crispy on the outside. Nice and taco-y, chewy on the ends. Or, I'm sorry. Notice how it's nice and crispy on the outside. It'll be nice and chewy on the inside. So let's keep flipping. And I usually just do one rotation over that. It looks like our enchiladas are ready to come out of the oven. So perfect timing. So... We'll get his tacos fried up real quick. Like I said, once again, I like to make everybody happy. It's just, it's just me. Uh, my friends call me the pleaser. <laughs> In more ways than one. No, I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. That was inappropriate. <laughs> so, uh, so what I'd like to do is, like I said, I like to go ahead and uh, fry the outside of the shells. It gives it that crispy uh, outside, nice, tasty, flaky type thing. So we're going to go ahead and take these and we're going to roll them onto a paper towel. Alright, we're rolling it on a paper towel. Go ahead and take it off and roll it on the paper towel. Try and get as much excess grease off there as we can. Make sure and go ahead and turn off our burner because he only wanted two. 
and then we'll go ahead and plate them up for him and that way he's happy and everybody else is happy so let's actually we're we're still rolling we're still going let's go ahead and move this off to the side and let's go ahead and check on our enchiladas and see how they're doing. Timer just went off. I don't know if you can see them, but darn it, they look good. <laughs> so let's go ahead and pull these out and we'll take a look. Yeah. That's what we're looking for. Is we're looking for very coated lots of enchilada sauce so that way we can go ahead and spoon that on top of everything so let's go ahead and get it plated i'm going to move you over here okay all right we got his tacos here so we're going to push those off to the side and my daughter has a friend over so we're going to go ahead and get her and her friend dished up for enchiladas this was actually all her idea i wasn't planning on making enchiladas quite this soon but she said hey dad you want to make some enchiladas? I was like, hey, I sure do. So, let's go ahead and bring these on over here. And we'll go ahead and... Madison's here too? Alright, let's get out of third plate. Alright, so, I just use a flipper, spatula, whichever you want to call it. Alright, we're going to dig underneath. Push down the sides. Dig underneath the other side all the way down. Now what this is going to do is that's going to put the enchilada sauce start soaking in the bottom all the way across. So let's go ahead and split one. Go ahead and take one out. Oh, super heavy. I tell you what. Put that on the plate just like that. Let's get the next one out here. Oh, oh, oh come on, flip it. Let's place it. There we go. Get it apart from the other one. It might work a little better there, Jonesy. All right. Let's do a second one. And Madison showed up. Yay. <laughs> All right. I love it when my kids bring friends over. I love cooking for them and getting more responses. They're usually good whether or not they like them or not. But that's our enchiladas, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I apologize if it was a little long and... I tend to ramble if you've met me before. So, everybody have a good night.